Be Hero is a game that seems to fall somewhere between Stardew Valley and Graveyard Keeper in terms of mechanics. The premise is that you came to this place to join the battle against a powerful villain and become a hero, but you arrived late. The battle is over, the villain is dead, the village was destroyed in the fighting, and now you can't even afford to take the boat back home. You need to get a job at the local tavern, farming, cooking, fishing, mining, and more, to earn money and get home, and in the process, help rebuild the ruined village. At least, that's what the game's description says. Does it deliver? Before we go any further, keep in mind that the game is in early access, and it's still really early in development. This review is based on a pre-release build of the game, and if you're watching this video a while after it was released, you might want to check for more recent news, since it's likely to change a lot. So how is Be Hero in its current state? Honestly, it's still pretty rough. First off, the story isn't even complete up to the introduction in the game's description. As of now, you arrive at the island and the locals tell you the battle is already over, but your character doesn't believe them. Through a series of really, really long and frankly tedious fetch quests, you take baby steps towards the battlefield so you can see it for yourself, but you can't actually reach it just yet. The next step is blocked by some special hard wood logs, which can only be broken by a... gold axe? Setting aside the fact that gold is one of the softest metals we know and a terrible material for an axe, the gold axe isn't implemented yet, so you can't progress any further in the current version of the game. So while I, the player, know that I'm going to need to fix up this town, my character only cares about getting to the battle to see if it's really over. It's true that you can sell items to the tavern keeper for money, and you can also gather materials to fix up some of the broken bits and pieces and make it look nicer, but you're not given an in-story reason to do this. The same goes for just about everything else in the game so far. So while you, the player, start trying to farm or forage or what have you and fix up the tavern, as far as your character is concerned, it's just a long series of hurdles put in his way as he tries to get to the battlefield. And I, I do mean his way. There are very limited visual character customization options so far, and there is no gender option, at least not as of the writing of this review. Your character is explicitly male. As of right now, the things you can do in the game are pretty limited. You can forage, grow crops, chop down trees, break rocks, and fight monsters in the forest, sort of. In theory, you can fish, but I haven't figured out how to unlock that yet. I think I might need to find the fishermen in the forest, but every time I go in there I get murdered. Sometimes even before an area has finished loading, so I'm not sure. You can craft a few items at crafting stations, but it takes a lot of grinding to actually gather enough resources to craft anything useful. The controls are... fine. They can be pretty clumsy at times. In particular, combat is very obtuse right now. It's hard to tell if you're hitting an enemy or not, even as they rapidly murder you. Watering crops on the farm is also pretty finicky since the hitboxes for the plants are irregular, and moving around them can be a pain. The game is also lacking much of a tutorial, and you either need to look up what the buttons do in the options menu or figure it out through trial and error. To the game's credit though, it does have full gamepad support. The game also lacks feedback in general for most activities while you play. It took me a while to figure out what rocks I could actually break with the pick and what trees I could chop with the axe. The sound effect when you miss is somewhat confusingly similar to the sound when you hit, and every swing you take at the air drains your energy bar. And that's another thing that needs a lot more balancing, the energy bar. At the start of the game, every swing with a tool or item you forage drains 4 out of your 100 points of stamina. That means you can only take 25 actions before your bar hits zero and you can't do anything else until you sleep. Theoretically, there are consumable items that can restore your stamina, but none of them are available at the start of the game, so you just have to go to sleep. Considering it can take 8 or more hits to fell a single tree, that doesn't leave you with much to work with each in-game day. This fact clashes awkwardly with the fact that the in-game clock moves really slowly. Typically, I don't make it past about 9am before I'm out of energy and have to go to sleep. Oh, and swinging your sword, an action which is usually free in games like this so you can defend yourself even when exhausted, costs just as much energy as any other task. You get a very limited number of swings of that sword before you're exhausted, and it's not even enough to get you through the forest. Doing tasks does give you experience, and you do level up, and leveling up does let you upgrade your character to gradually reduce the energy costs of these various tasks, but it's a long, grindy road towards just making the game feel playable at all. When the bulk of the gameplay is about grinding to remove annoying things about the game to try to make it actually fun, it's, it's just not a good sign. Here's hoping they balance this a little better soon. 
Doing tasks may use up your energy before 9 a.m., but on the other hand, you do spend a tremendous amount of time just running around the map. Completing one of the missions usually requires running back and forth across the entire world multiple times, passing messages or fetching items. I'm not sure if these tedious tasks are just placeholders or ways to pad out the current length of the game, or if the devs just added them to give you something to do, but truthfully, they are... they're not fun. And the sound of running along the paths gets old and annoying real fast. So I think that's pretty much all you need to know about Bee Hero in its current state. I've had a lot of negative things to say, but I also want to emphasize that the reason I'm going into such detail about the game's flaws is because I think there is the potential for a really fun game here. When I look around the ruined village, I want to fix up all those buildings. I want to do all the grindy tasks of farming and mining and cooking and repairing the tavern and serving its guests. I like the idea of this game, but right now, that idea is only theoretical. The things that have actually been put into the game mostly just feel like obstacles to slow you down while they try to build the rest of it. So should you get B-Hero? If you're in love with the idea of the game and you have the money to invest in its development, go ahead and purchase it now. But if you want a game you can actually play and enjoy, I'd hold off for a while and give them some time to add more to it. This one is still a bit raw. It needs at least a few more months in the oven, I'd say. But I hope they manage to get this game finished, because I do think it's a great idea, and I do want to play it. If you'd like to see me revisit this game further in its development, let me know in the comments, and I'll make another video about it sometime in the future. Whether Be Hero is your cup of tea or not, make sure to follow my channel for more indie game reviews. And if you want to support me, check out patreon.com slash secretfoxfire. You can get your name in the credits of these videos, as well as lots of other rewards starting at just $1, including private game servers, behind-the-scenes videos, ebooks, free games, and more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.